railway line virtually divides Australia in half, straight down through the arid centre of a continent at least the size of the United States of America. It's going to make for a great journey travelling from north to south. Australia is totally different from any other continent on Earth. It's an ancient landscape that ranges from vast stretches of arid outback desert to lush forests and steamy tropical wetlands of the coastal north. Time capsules of untouched landscapes and sanctuaries for native wildlife are preserved for future generations in national parks. Australia has more than a quarter of a million square miles of national parks and reserves and we're going to be visiting half a dozen of the best on this Irwin family great escape. We'll be travelling across Australia along a historic route forged by our pioneering explorers. But what started with Afghan camel trains in the 19th century is now linked by a rail train in the 21st century, the GAN. It's an incredible ride from crocs to camels in this outback great escape. Yes, This is Darwin, frontier town, gateway to the outback central Australia, capital of the Northern Territory and our starting point for our journey on the GAN. With only 72,000 people, Darwin is a very compact tropical city and the northern terminus for the GAN railway. All yours Mick? Thanks mate. Thank you mate. Well we got here nice and early so as we can load the car up, get on with the job. The train's name, the GAN, is short for Afghan, the nationality of the first outback camel drivers of the mid-1800s. And here's the mighty symbol of the GAN, with the camel and the Afghan camel driver. It was the camels and the, and the Afghan camel drivers which actually opened up the interior of Australia. And we're virtually following the same route that they took from north to south and south to north. And I'm lucky to have the whole family on this adventure. My wife Terry, baby Bob Bob, and of course my gorgeous daughter Bindi. This is awesome. We'll be able to see everything. Uh -huh. I'm going to watch for dingoes. I'm going to watch for kangaroos. I'm going to play with the curtains. <laughs> what are you going to look for, Robert? I'm watching for camels. Camels? Oh, yes, he is. This incredible cross-country trip is 1,851 miles from coast to coast. Without a doubt, it's one of the world's great train journeys through one of the sparsest populated regions on the face of the earth. She's crossing over the Adelaide River. It's got pretty small. We're a long way inland and heading further inland. We've been given the special privilege of travelling in a restored chairman's carriage for the entire journey. We're enjoying the same fine food and service as the other passengers and the same panoramic view of Outback Australia. Get on board. Passengers can indulge in some off-train touring and before joining the GAN, most would have taken the chance to visit the famous Kakadu National Park. Only a few hours drive outside of Darwin and teeming with wildlife. This incredible part of the world covers more than three and a quarter million acres from the ocean to a rugged inland plateau. On this journey, from north to south, we're going to go through a whole stack of different habitat types and regions. Up here in the top end, it's all about the balmy, the steamy, wet tropics. You probably won't see anything like this anywhere else on Earth. It's the end of the dry season, and all the wildlife of Kakadu has to coexist in and around the shrinking waterholes until the rains arrive in a few weeks' time. The constant bird noise is unbelievable, and so are the numbers. And nowhere else can you see crocodiles in the wild this easily. I'm in seventh heaven, watching all this natural behaviour happening right in front of me, and it's open to anyone who wants to visit.
Australians are incredibly lucky to have such unique and accessible wildlife habitat right on our back doorstep. It's a great backyard, but it's chock block full of crocodiles. Have a look at these slides. Zipping down into the water. See how fresh this one is? With the cloud of mud coming up, he just zipped in in front of us. Nice big slide here, belonging to a 12 foot plus animal. By crikey, there's a lot of crocs here. And the reason is the amount of food. Magpie geese and whistling ducks buy the millions. Stacks of them. And mixed in with the bird life, every local mammal and reptile is attracted by food and water. This is what the top end of the wet tropics is known for. Great congregations of water birds. As the water recedes heading into the dry season, you can see these magpie geese and ibis and, and the other water birds all congregate at these shallow water holes. Even a sand goanna running in between the geese. Check it out, what a spectacle. And this is the reason why so many people flock to this area into the wet tropics, the far north, up near Darwin. This typifies the wetlands of Kakadu. You'd have to be the only wildlife presenter that hasn't got their front teeth. What do you want for Christmas? From here on, stretches of water like in Kakadu National Park are few and far between as we head towards Australia's arid red centre. But our next stop is an oasis in the desert, the spectacular Catherine Gorge. And in the club cars, there's family time to enjoy the stark desert beauty from air-conditioned comfort. Stops Catherine Gorge. I can't wait to see it, mostly because of the history. The whole place is steeped in this wonderful, dramatic history. The Catherine Gorge is somewhere that tourists really enjoy frequenting because there's canoeing, swimming, wonderful boat tours, and those spectacular gorges. 25 million years of water washing out the gorges to make something you can't see anywhere else on Earth. perfect place to involve the whole family in our great escape. To start with, we're taking a helicopter tour to fully appreciate the scale and size of Catherine Gorge and how it fits into the ancient landscape of Nitmanlook National Park. It's two very diverse habitats on one location. The vast expanse of the Arnhem Land escarpment is split apart by gorges carved by flowing water during prehistoric wet seasons. Up top, there's a dry, rocky habitat with sparse vegetation, and in the deep gorges, there's the lush growth of a riverside environment. Catherine Gorge is a tourist mecca with more than a quarter of a million visitors every year. And after the chopper flight, we're getting down on the water for a tour in a flat bottom boat. Provided you've got a permit, you can put a private boat in one of the gorges for most of the year. And you can even do a bit of fishing. But for a comprehensive guided expedition, it's only the approved tour boats. Catherine Gorge is a remarkable piece of geography in the middle of the outback. As well as the boat trip, there are some easy walks among the 60 miles of marked walking trails. Sometimes it's described as 13 separate gorges, but it's really one long winding gouge in the sandstone as the Catherine River turns left and right along fault lines in the rock. For 23 million years, the river's been slowly carving a unique natural wonder out of the rock. And there's a long way to go yet. The sandstone goes down for another mile. Surprisingly, there's no fossils. The rock is so old that it goes back to a time when living creatures had no bones or shells. Animals like jellyfish. Canoeing here can mean a splash and a paddle for a bit of fun or an adventurous trek that runs for days with overnight camping in some incredible wilderness spots deep in the gorges. <laughs> 